Hello friends, this video on environmental issues part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us talk about noise control. Now as I was telling that uh, many people might wonder that why noise cause pollution. Now as I briefed before also that there is so much strength in noise, in the harm of noise that it can affect a human being not only psychologically but physiologically as well. It can make a person deaf. It not only deaf, it can also affect the brain of a person. So that way noise can have many adverse effects. But the question is when, at what level do we say that noise is harmful? What is that level? Like, for example, right now I am speaking and you are listening to it. So whatever I am speaking, that is also a sound. But now if I start screaming and if I start shouting uh, very frequently over a long period of time, so that might sound irritating to you. So that kind of, then that sound will be called as a noise. So how do we differentiate between which one is a normal sound, which is pleasant to hear, which is audible to us at the same time it is okay for us to listen to that and which is a noise and how do we control noise so noise is undesired high level of sound so when the same sound is at a very high level when it's when the volume is very high at the same time it, it happens in a very undesired manner then the sound is said to be noise now some of the things which are depicted on the screen will tell you what a noise is. For example, uh, burning of crackers all of a sudden, maybe at midnight when you are sleeping and suddenly somebody is burning crackers one after another. The sound of an aeroplane from when it is at a very nearer height from where you are. So that sound is also very horrible. Sound of loudspeakers at very loud, loud volume or the music which is being played in a disco which is generally very loud or unnecessary honking of vehicles or the sound of an engine if you are on a railway train or a train if you are located very uh, close to the railway track. So these are some of the sounds which can be categorized as noise because they are extremely high level of sound. So the question is which sound is noise? So let us quickly look at the audible range of frequency. So different living organisms have different range of hearing. So what do we mean by range of hearing? It is the range of frequency of sound which is audible to a living being. For example, if you compare a human being with a fish or with an insect, so it is quite obvious that both these organisms will have different ability to hear different frequencies of sound and that is what we call as range of hearing. So now if we are talking about human beings, when the frequency of a sound becomes quite high when compared to the range of hearing, that is when we define it as noise. Now categories of sound based on frequencies. Now as the frequency of the sound changes, the, we have given a term for that particular sound. Now the range of hearing for human beings is or the audible range of frequency of sound is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now by now you all must be knowing that hertz is the unit which is used to measure frequency. So 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is like the audible range of hearing. Now any sound which is, or which has less frequency than 20 hertz is called infrasound. Infra means less and ultra means more. Ultrasound is any sound of frequency greater than 20 kilohertz. So it is something like you have 20 hertz here and you have 20 kilohertz that is 20 into 10 to the power 3 hertz here. So this is going to be your range of hearing. That is, this is the range where you can hear to a sound comfortably. So anything below this is going to be infrasound and anything above this is going to be ultrasound. So these are the different frequencies of sound. And when the sound becomes higher than the range of hearing, then it, is, then it can be defined as a noise. Now the range of hearing for different living organisms is completely different. For example, in case of human beings, we have different range of hearing. Whereas in case of different animals, like if you compare it with a dog or a rhinoceros or a whale or an elephant. So 
they all will have different range of hearing. Therefore, noise will have different definition for different organism. Now, something which might be a noise for an elephant might not be a noise for us. So that is how it is. So it, it depends on the range of hearing of each particular organism. So now let us look at some of the harmful effects of noise. Now what harm can it cause and looking at these harmful effects you will be able to understand that why it has been categorized as a cause of air pollution or in fact many of many people have given a separate term for the pollution caused by noise and it is called noise pollution. Permanent hearing loss that is quite uh, common and it happens quite frequently that person might lose the hearing capacity forever. Heart problems, sometimes it, ha it has impact. Now as I said, so brain is the control center of our body. So now if noise or if the irritating noise or unnecessary loud noise, if it has impact on your brain, so your brain is the control center of your entire body. So if, depending upon which part of the brain it has impacted, it can also impact other parts of your body because after all the control of different parts of your body is with the brain. It can cause hypertension, it can uh, make a person feel restless and it can cause problems with the, the functioning of the heart. Sleeplessness. Now with so much of noise, you might not be able to sleep properly. So you would have observed that, uh, for example, at night when you are going to sleep, what do you do? You put off the lights, you close the window panes and you want to sleep in peace. You do not want so much of noise. Does it happen that you switch on your tape recorder at a very high volume and then you go off to sleep? That doesn't happen normally, right? So if, in fact, you don't even want other people to speak in the same room where you are sleeping because that disturbs your sleep. And if a person doesn't get proper sleep at night, then the person will not be able to remain active throughout the day. So sleep is something which is extremely important for the proper functioning of the body. Stress. Too much of noise can even cause stress. You might feel tired, you might feel tensed, and you might not be able to concentrate on whatever you are doing. So stress is another important thing that can happen. And whenever you have stress, your hormone levels might change inside your body and it can impact you in a number of ways. So now that we have looked at the harmful effects of noise pollution, now let us see how we can control noise. First of all, limit vehicle speed. So now if we limit vehicle speed, in that case what happens is this unnecessary honking doesn't happen. The so much of noise which comes out of the vehicles that doesn't happen. So limiting vehicle speed is one solution. Avoid unnecessary honking. Now it has been observed that many vehicles, many drivers, they unnecessary honk. Let us suppose even if there is a red light and there are so many vehicles standing one after another, but still it has been seen that many people unnecessarily honk and create noise pollution. Use of quieter engines in aircraft. Now in aircraft also there are uh, options where quieter engines can be used which makes less noise while landing or while, while taking off. So those kind of engines should be incorporated. Use of sound absorbent materials in industries. Now in industries there are a lot of uh, you know, work going on. For example, it, industries is all about different set of machineries. So machineries will involve a lot of sound. So that means a lot of sound will be coming out of industries. So what can be done is sound absorbing glass fibers can be used in industries so that those sound remain there where it is taking place. So these kind of materials can be used so that noise pollution can be controlled to some extent. Limit sound level of crackers. Okay, now it, as I said before also, sometimes it happens that uh, maybe you are staying in a residential area and all of a sudden at midnight when you are sleeping, somebody comes and starts burning crackers and the sound is extremely loud, right? So it, it not only disturbs your sleep, but it also bothers you. It also sometimes makes you feel stressed and uh, sometimes elderly people might not feel good for very small kids, they might get some hearing problems due to so much of a loud sound. 
and moreover in especially near places where you have public uh, things like hospitals or schools colleges so these kind of places it should all the more be limited so the sound of crackers should also be limited and there should be a time limit up to which uh, crackers can be burned for example these days there are a lot of rules uh, in most of the cities where you you are not allowed to play loud music beyond 11 o'clock all the discs and pubs are to be closed by 11 o'clock crackers should not be burned after 11 o'clock so that is a quite a set quite a few rules have been incorporated and that is for good so this is how noise can be controlled limit time and area beyond which loudspeakers should not be played as i said especially areas like hospitals where we have patients which who need rest maybe people who are already suffering from some heart problems or they have undergone some surgery so they need to get peace of mind so that they are able to rest and relax so unnecessary noise should be avoided in those kind of areas Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.